Heligoland, German, Helgoland, Heloland, Heligolandic Frisian, Diet Lun lit. The land. Mooring Frisian, Helilange, is a small German archipelago in the North Sea. The islands were at one time Danish and later British possessions. The islands are located in the Heligoland Bight, part of the German Bight in the southeastern corner of the North Sea, and had a population of 1,127 at the end of 2016. They are the only German islands not in the immediate vicinity of the mainland. They lie approximately 69 kilometers 43 miles by sea from Cuxhaven at the mouth of the River Elbe. During the period of British possession, the lyrics to Deutschland lied, which became the national anthem of Germany, were written on one of the islands by August Heinrich Hoffmann von Fallersleben in 1841, while he was vacationing there. In addition to German, the local population, who are ethnic Frisians, speak the Heligolandic dialect of the North Frisian language called Helunder. Heligoland used to be called Heligland, or Holy Land, possibly due to the island's long association with the god Forseti. Geography <inaudible> 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 Heligoland is located 46 kilometers 29 miles off the German coastline and consists of two islands the populated triangular 1 square kilometer 0.4 square miles main island Hauptinsel to the west and the dune dune Heligolandic de Hallam to the east Heligoland generally refers to the former island Dune is somewhat smaller at 0.7 square kilometers 0.27 square miles lower and surrounded by sand beaches it is not permanently inhabited, but is today the location of Heligoland's airport. The main island is commonly divided into the Unterland, lower land, Heligolandic, Diet Dealerland, at sea level, to the right on the photograph, where the harbour is located, the Oberland, upper land, Heligolandic, Diet Bopperland, consisting of the plateau visible in the photographs and the Middleland, middle land, between them on one side of the island. The Middleland came into being in 1947 as a result of explosions detonated by the British Royal Navy the so-called Big Bang. See below. The main island also features small beaches in the north and the south and drops to the sea 50 metres 160 feet high in the north, west and southwest. In the latter, the ground continues to drop underwater to a depth of 56 metres 184 feet below sea level. Heligoland's most famous landmark is the Lang Anna, Long Anna, or Tall Anna, a freestanding rock column or stack, 47 meters (154 feet) high, found northwest of the island proper. The two islands were connected until 1720, when the natural connection was destroyed by a storm flood. The highest point is on the main island, reaching 61 meters (200 feet) above sea level. Although culturally closer to North Frisia in the German district of Nordfriesland, the two islands are part of the district of Pinburg in the state of Schleswig-Holstein. The main island has a good harbour and is frequented mostly by sailing yachts. History The German Bight and the area around the island is known to have been inhabited since prehistoric times. Flint tools have been recovered from the bottom of the sea surrounding Heligoland. On the Oberland, prehistoric burial mounds were visible until the late 19th century and excavations showed skeletons and artifacts. Moreover, prehistoric copper plates have been found underwater near the island. Those plates were almost certainly made on the Oberland. In 697, Radbod, the last Frisian king, retreated to the then single island after his defeat by the Franks so it is written in the life of Willebrod by Alcuin. By 1231, the island was listed as the property of the Danish king Valdemar II. Archaeological findings from the 12th to 14th century suggest the processing of copper ore on the island. There is a general understanding that the name Heligoland in origin means Holy Land. Cf. Modern Dutch and German Heilig. Holy. In the course of the centuries, several alternative theories have been proposed, explaining the name from a Danish king Heligo or from the Frisian word Helig, meaning Salt Marsh Island. In this sense, the 1911 Encyclopædia Britannica suggests an etymology of Haliglin, or Haligland, i.e., land of banks, which cover and uncover. Traditional economic activities included fishing, hunting birds and seals, wrecking, and very important for many overseas powers piloting overseas ships into the harbours of Hanseatic League cities such as Bremen and Hamburg. 
Moreover, in some periods Heligoland was an excellent base point for huge herring catches. As a result, until 1714 ownership switched several times between Denmark and the Duchy of Schleswig, with one period of control by Hamburg. In August 1714, it was captured by Denmark, and it remained Danish until 1807. 19th century On the 11th of September 1807, during the Napoleonic Wars, HMS Carrier brought to the Admiralty the dispatches from Admiral Thomas McNamara Russell announcing Heligoland's capitulation to the British. Heligoland became a centre of smuggling and espionage against Napoleon. Denmark then ceded Heligoland to George III of the United Kingdom by the Treaty of Kiel the 14th of January 1814. Thousands of Germans came to Britain and joined the King's German Legion via Heligoland. The British annexation of Heligoland was ratified by the Treaty of Paris signed on 30 May 1814, as part of a number of territorial reallocations following on the abdication of Napoleon as Emperor of the French. The prime reason at the time for Britain's retention of a small and seemingly worthless acquisition was to restrict any future French naval aggression against the Scandinavian or German states. In the event no effort was made during the period of British administration to make use of the islands for naval purposes, partly for financial reasons but principally because the Royal Navy considered Heligoland to be too exposed as a forward base. In 1826, Heligoland became a seaside spa and soon turned into a popular tourist resort for the European upper class. The island attracted artists and writers, especially from Germany and Austria who apparently enjoyed the comparatively liberal atmosphere, including Heinrich Heine and August Heinrich Hoffmann von Fallersleben. More vitally it was a refuge for revolutionaries of the 1830s and the 1848 German Revolution. As related in the Leisure Hour, it was a land where there are no bankers, no lawyers, and no crime, where all gratuities are strictly forbidden, the landladies are all honest and the boatmen take no tips." While the English Illustrated magazine provided a description the most glowing terms, "...no one should go there who cannot be content with the charms of brilliant light, of ever-changing atmospheric effects, of a land free from the countless discomforts of a large and busy population, and of an air that tastes like draughts of life itself." Britain gave up the islands to Germany in 1890 in the Heligoland-Zanzibar Treaty. The newly unified Germany was concerned about a foreign power controlling land from which it could command the western entrance to the militarily important Kiel Canal, then under construction along with other naval installations in the area and thus traded for it. A. Grandfathering. Optant approach prevented the Heligolanders as they were named in the British measures from forfeiting advantages because of this imposed change of status. Heligoland has an important place in the history of the study of ornithology, and especially the understanding of migration. The book Heligoland, an ornithological observatory by Heinrich Gatke, published in German in 1890 and in English in 1895, described an astonishing array of migrant birds on the island and was a major influence on future studies of bird migration, in Britain in particular. 20th century. Under the German Empire, the islands became a major naval base, and during the First World War the civilian population was evacuated to the mainland. The island was fortified with concrete gun emplacements along its cliffs similar to the Rock of Gibraltar. Island defences included 364 mounted guns including 142 42-cm disappearing guns overlooking shipping channels defended with ten rows of naval mines. The first naval engagement of the war, the Battle of Heligoland Bight, was fought nearby in the first month of the war. The islanders returned in 1918, but during the Nazi era the naval base was reactivated. Lager Helgoland, the German labor camp on Alderney, was named after the island. Werner Heisenberg first formulated the equation underlying his picture of quantum mechanics while on Heligoland in the 1920s. While a student of Arnold Sommerfeld at Munich in the early 1920s, Heisenberg first met the Danish physicist Niels Bohr. He and Bohr went for long hikes in the mountains and discussed the failure of existing theories to account for the new experimental results on the quantum structure of matter. Following these discussions, Heisenberg plunged into several months of intensive theoretical research, but met with continual frustration. 
Finally, suffering from a severe attack of hay fever, he retreated to the treeless and pollenless island of Heligoland in the summer of 1925. There he conceived the basis of the quantum theory. In 1937, construction began on a major reclamation project, Project Hummershare, intended to expand existing naval facilities and restore the island to its pre-1629 dimensions. The project was largely abandoned after the start of World War II and was never completed. Topic. World War II The area was the setting of the aerial battle of the Heligoland Bight in 1939, a result of British bombing attempts on German Navy vessels in that area. The area's waters were frequently mined by British aircraft. Heligoland also had military function as a sea fortress in the Second World War. Completed and ready for use were the submarine bunker North Sea 3, the coastal artillery, an air raid shelter system with extensive bunker tunnels and the airfield with the Air Force, Jagdstaffel Helgoland April to October 1943. Forced labor of, among others, citizens of the Soviet Union was used during the construction of military installations during World War II. On 3 December 1939, Heligoland was bombed by the Allies for the first time. The attack, by 24 Wellington bombers of RAF squadrons 38, 115 and 149, failed to destroy its target of German warships at anchor. Within three days in early 1940, the Royal Navy lost three submarines in Heligoland, HMS Undine N48 on 6 January, HMS Seahorse 98S on 7 January and HMS Starfish on 9 January. Early in the war, the island was little affected by bombing. This shows the minor military significance of the island for British forces. Through the development of the Luftwaffe, the island had largely lost its strategic importance. The Jagdstaffel Helgoland, temporarily used for defence against Allied bombing, was equipped with a rare version of the Messerschmitt Bf 109 fighter originally designed for use on aircraft carriers. Shortly before the war ended in 1945, Georg Braun and Erich Friedrichs succeeded in forming a resistance group. However, shortly before they were to execute the plans, they were betrayed by two members of the group. About 20 men were arrested on 18 April 1945, 14 of them were transported to Cuxhaven. After a short trial, five resistors were executed by firing squad at Cuxhaven Solenberg on 21 April 1945. To honor them, in April 2010 the Helgoland Museum installed six stumbling blocks on the roads of Heligoland. Their names are Eric P. J. Friedrichs, Georg E. Braun, Karl Fouka, Kurt A. Pester, Martin O. Wachel, and Heinrich Pru. With two waves of attacks on 18 and 19 April 1945, 1,000 aircraft of the British Royal Air Force dropped about 7,000 bombs. The majority of the population survived in the bomb shelters. 285 people were killed, including many Luftwaffenhelfer and naval auxiliaries. 128 of the casualties were anti-aircraft crew. The bomb attacks rendered the island uninhabitable, and it was evacuated. Topic. Explosion From 1945 to 1952 the uninhabited Heligoland Islands were used as a bombing range. On 18 April 1947, the Royal Navy detonated 6,700 tons of explosives. Big Bang or British Bang, creating one of the biggest single non-nuclear detonations in history. Though the attack was aimed at the fortifications, the island's total destruction would have been accepted. The blow shook the main island several miles down to its base, changing its shape, the Middleland was created. On 20 December 1950, two students and a professor from Heidelberg, René Ludesdorf, Georg von Hatzfeld and Hubertus zu Lowenstein, occupied the off-limits island and raised various German, European and local flags. The students were arrested by the British military and brought back to the mainland. The event started a movement to restore the islands to Germany, which gained the support of the German parliament. On 1 March 1952, Heligoland was returned to German control, and the former inhabitants were allowed to return. The 1 March is an official holiday on the island. The German authorities had to clear a huge amount of undetonated ammunition, landscape the main island, and rebuild the houses before it could be resettled. <laughs> Modern day 
Heligoland is now a holiday resort and enjoys a tax-exempt status, as it is part of the EU but excluded from the EU VAT area and customs union. Consequently, much of the economy is founded on sales of cigarettes, alcoholic beverages and perfume to tourists who visit the islands. The ornithological heritage of Heligoland has also been re-established, with the Heligoland Bird Observatory, now managed by the Ornithologische Arbeitsgemeinschaft Helgoland e.V. Ornithological Society of Heligoland", which was founded in 1991. A search and rescue SAR base of the DGZRS, the Deutsche Gesellschaft zur Redding Schiffbrüchiger German Maritime Search and Rescue Service, is located on Heligoland. <inaudible> <inaudible> Energy supply Before the island was connected to the mainland network by a submarine cable in 2009, electricity on Heligoland was generated by a local diesel plant. Heligoland was the site of a trial of GROWIAN, a large wind turbine testing project. In 1990, a 1.2 MW turbine of the MAN type WKA60 was installed. Besides technical problems, the turbine was not lightning proof and insurance companies would not provide coverage. The wind energy project was viewed as a failure by the islanders and was stopped. The submarine cable in use now has a length of 53 kilometers 33 miles and is one of the longest AC submarine power cables in the world and the longest of its kind in Germany. It was manufactured by the North German Sea Cable Works in a single piece and was laid by the barge Nostag 10 in spring 2009. The Heligoland power cable, which is designed for an operational voltage of 30 kV, reaches the German mainland at St. Peter Ording. Topic. Expansion plans and wind industry Plans to re-enlarge the land bridge between different parts of the island by means of land reclamation came up between 2008 and 2010. However, the local community voted against the project. Since 2013, a new industrial site is being expanded on the southern harbor. E. On, RWE, and Wind MW plan to manage operation and services of large offshore wind parks from Heligoland. The range had been cleaned of leftover ammunition. Topic: <laughs> Climate. The climate of Heligoland is typical of an offshore climate, being almost free of pollen and thus ideal for people with pollen allergies. Since there is no land mass in the vicinity, temperatures rarely drop below minus 5 degrees Celsius 23 degrees Fahrenheit even in the winter. At times, winter temperatures can be higher than in Hamburg by up to 10 degrees Celsius 18 degrees Fahrenheit because cold winds from Russia are weakened. While spring tends to be comparatively cool, autumn on Heligoland is often longer and warmer than on the mainland, and statistically, the climate is generally sunnier. The coldest temperature ever recorded on Heligoland was minus 11.2 degrees Celsius 12 degrees Fahrenheit in February 1956, while the highest was 28.7 degrees Celsius 84 degrees Fahrenheit in July 1994. Owing to the mild climate, figs have reportedly been grown on the island as early as 1911, and a 2005 article mentioned Japanese bananas, figs, agaves, palm trees and other exotic plants that had been planted on Heligoland and were thriving. There still is an old mulberry tree in the upper town. <laughs> Geology The island of Heligoland is a geological oddity, the presence of the main island's characteristic red sedimentary rock in the middle of the German Bight is unusual. It is the only such formation of cliffs along the continental coast of the North Sea. The formation itself, called the Bunter Sandstone or Buntsandstein, is from the early Triassic geologic age. It is older than the white chalk that underlies the island dune, the same rock that forms the white cliffs of Dover in England and cliffs of Danish and German islands in the Baltic Sea. In fact, a small chalk rock close to Heligoland, called Wick Cliff, white Cliff is known to have existed within sight of the island to the west until the early 18th century, when storm floods finally eroded it to below sea level. Heligoland's rock is significantly harder than the postglacial sediments and sands forming the islands and coastlines to the east of the island. This is why the core of the island, which a thousand years ago was still surrounded by a large, low-lying marshland and sand dunes separated from coast in the east only by narrow channels, has remained to this day, although the onset of the North Sea has long eroded away all of its surroundings. 
A small piece of Heligoland sand dunes remains the sand isle just across the harbour called Dune, Dune. A referendum in June 2011 dismissed a proposal to reconnect the main island to the Dune Islet with a landfill. Flag The Heligoland flag is very similar to its coat of arms. It is a tricolor flag with three horizontal bars, from top to bottom, green, red and white. Each of the colors has its symbolic meaning, as expressed in its motto. There is an alternative version in which the word sand, sand is replaced with strand beach. <laughs> Road restrictions There are very few cars on Heligoland. A special section, section 50, in the German traffic regulations Strandverkehrsordnung, ABBR. STVO prohibits the use of automobiles and bicycles on the island. No other region in Germany has any exceptions to the general regulations in the STVO, although other North Sea islands, such as Baltram, have also banned the public from using cars and motorbikes. Except for the local ambulance van and the small fire trucks, the only motor vehicles on the island are electrically powered and used primarily for moving material. Kick scooters are sometimes used as substitutes for bicycles. The island received its first police car on 17 January 2006. Until then the island's policemen moved on foot and by bicycle, being exempt from the bicycle ban. Topic notable residents Peter Andreessen Ulrichs 1781-1869 a lexicographer and linguist. Rear Admiral Sir John Hindmarsh 1785-1860, veteran of the Battle of Trafalgar and first governor of South Australia, was the governor of Heligoland 1840-56. Heinrich Gatke (1814–1897), artist and ornithologist; August Eline (1842–1911), a German-American brewer, business executive, and horse breeder; Richard Mansfield (1857–1907), actor; Robert Knud Friedrich Pilger (1876–1953), botanist born in Heligoland, specialized in the study of conifers. Eva von der Austen (1881–1936), the soprano, was born here. James Cruss (1926–1997), a German writer of children's and picture books, illustrator, poet, dramatist, and scriptwriter. Georg C. F. Grieve, born 1973 in Heligoland, software developer, physicist, and author. Topic in culture: Heligoland gave its name to the Heligoland trap used in bird ringing. Anton Bruckner composed a large-scale choral work based on text about Heligoland. The text of the German national anthem was written by August Heinrich Hoffmann von Fallersleben during his vacation on then British governed Heligoland. British trip hop duo Massive Attack named their fifth album after the German archipelago. Romance Helgolandska, Heligoland Romance, a poem by Jan Neruda from his collection Baladi a Romance, is named after the island. Topic Lieutenant Governors of Heligoland 1807-1890 1807-1808, Corbett James Doverne 1808-1815, William Osborne Hamilton 1750-1818 1815-1840, Sir Henry King 1840-1856, Sir John Hindmarsh 1857-1863, Richard Pattinson 1863-1881, Sir Henry Berkeley Fitzhead and Gay Max 1881 to 1888, Sir John Terence Nichols O'Brien 1888-1890, Arthur Cecil Stuart Barclay Topic See also for SETI, a Norse god whose central place of worship was at Heligoland Location Hypotheses of Atlantis, Heligoland is hypothesized as a possible location for Atlantis by the Austrian author Jürgen Spanath. Postage stamps and postal history of Heligoland Topic References Topic Further reading Topic Papers Charlier, C. 1947. L'Explosion de Heligoland, Discussion des Observations Effectuées à UCCLE. Seal et Terra in French. 64-193-214. Bibcode, 1948-CNT, .64, 193-C. Gardner, N. 2008. An Island Outpost, Helgoland. Hidden Europe Magazine, 20, 2-7. ISSN 1860-6318. Historical synopsis with review of modern economy and society on Heligoland. Reich, H., Forge, O., Schultz, G. A. 
Results of seismic observations in Germany on the Heligoland explosion of April 18, 1947. Journal of Geophysical Research. 56 2, 147-156. Bibcode, 1951JGR. .56, 147R. doi, 10.1029.jz056i002p00147. Topic: Books. Andres, Jorg, Insel Helgoland. Die Seefestung und IHR Erb. Ch. Links Verlag, Berlin 2015, ISBN 978-3-86153-770-0 Black, William George 1888. Heligoland and the Islands of the North Sea. Edinburgh, W. Blackwood. Dierschke, Jochen, Die Vogelwelt der Insel Helgoland. Missing Link e.g., 2011, ISBN 978-3-00-035437-3. Drauer, George 2011. Heligoland, The True Story of German Bight and the Island that Britain Forgot. Stroud, UK, History Press. ISBN 9780752460000. Originally published in 2002, ISBN 0-7509-2600-7. Friedrichs, A., W. I. R. Walton Helgoland Retten, auf den Spuren der Widerstandsgruppe von 1945. Museum Helgoland, 2010, ISBN 978-3-00-030405-7. Grand Hook, Heike, Roter Flint und Heiliges Land Helgoland. Wachholz Verlag, Neumünster 2009, ISBN 978 3 529 02774 one Ritzima, Alex. 2007. Heligoland, Past and Present. Lulu Press. ISBN 978-1847531902. Wallmann, Eckhard, Eine Kolonie Word Deutsch, Helgoland zwischen den Weltkriegen. Nordfriesic Institute, Bredstedt 2012, ISBN 978-3-88007-376-0. External links Film clip of Coast Defenses Heligoland Tourist Board, includes an aerial photograph of Heligoland front and dune back. Site about planting palms on Heligoland Heligoland web cams Heligoland Bird Observatory Footage of destruction of Heligoland fortifications April 1947